I just thought this was cool. This was in the glove box. Checking your oil. See your Plymouth dealer for oil change recommendations. Well, hell, it says it right there. Change every 8,000 miles. Oh, I'm surprised on that. Every 5,000 miles if equipped with hydro drive. Hydro drive is fluid drive. It's kind of like the first stages, I guess, of automatic maybe. I think it like uses a clutch to let out, but then it shifts on its own. You let off the throttle and it shifts. I'm not real familiar with it. Once a month or every thousand miles, additional point required lubrication at 10,000 miles. Air pressure, 28 pounds. After driving at moderate speeds. Yeah, I'm not sure driving at high speed, 29 pounds. Oh, just the air pressure. Just imagine that, 1953, and that's what's left of it. It's amazing it's even there. Damn. So with this here, this is the water temperature. This is just the gauge. They put something in just so they know it wasn't overheating. Because up there it's not working, but we're going to take a look at it and see if we can't figure it out. I don't know because those are 6 volt. The speedometer works, so that's awesome. It's pretty damn accurate. But none of the other gauges work. Like I said, nothing's wired except for the front lights. So I don't know if because they're 6 volt, you know. So they wired this in, but they didn't even hook up the wires for the lights because this will light up at night. But if I can't get those working... I'll just mount, you can get like a little three, nice little three gauge. I think I make one that has like kind of an old school look to it. So we'll deal with that when the time comes. Compliments of cruise and few. Look, but please don't touch. That's awesome. That's my first time driving a three speed on the tree. It's fun. I like it. I like it a lot. Look at them pedals. Oh, just think of somebody getting this brand new after coming home from the war while getting ready to head back for Korea. It's amazing. Look at that, an ashtray. Oh shit, there's a condom in there. Nah, but there's actually ashes. Look at that. Could they be from 1953? Now, is that a snake backer? Oh, that's a piece of wire. Could those be 1953 ashes? <laughs> you know what? That might have been somebody's remains. He was taking them back to New Mexico to bury them. I do have the cigarette lighter. I don't know if it works. I'll have to. I doubt it. <laughs> but there's the ignition. And there's the switches for the lights, the uh, dash lights, and the wipers. The wipers do not work. Once again, I don't think nothing's like they didn't wire it. So. I think what happened, this car came from New Mexico to uh, PA, because I'm the fourth owner. And uh, I think the guy in PA is the one that did the most, the 12 volt conversion, but didn't finish it. And then I got this off of a uh, younger guy. And he said he didn't do nothing but just put the tires on. So, but, yeah. But yeah, I mean, just look at that. Look how clean that is. Like I said, you got a little bit of spot rust there, and that's no big deal. But these jams, man, you just don't find them like that. Bottom of the doors are real nice. Just got a little bit of surface there, but shit, I got to take the back seat out because I could see there was a mouse in there because there's some mouse shit. He's my slave these old cars. Look at that. Yeah, I love the natural patina, to be honest with you. So, all right, everybody. I appreciate you watching. Okay, that's where she's going to hang out until I can get the garage cleaned out. To put her in. So you can see that little puddle under there. It's dripping gas. Only when it's uh, running, so I think we'll get her all taken care of. Looking forward to doing the Google and searching and finding stuff I want to get for it, parts and stuff. So those are just white wall tires that just they didn't wash the blue off. 
She runs good. Needs a little bit of carburetor. I'm going to rebuild the carburetor. It's a little... i got to get the right air cleaner on it. And then we'll see if uh needs any adjustment or anything. All right. At some point, I'm going to... Uh, do a little coffee talk and kind of explain uh, why I bought this. <laughs> I mean, it really doesn't need an explanation. It's a cool car. I think it is. Okay, we got Rosalita in the garage. And if you remember our uh, video I showed my garage, it was a friggin' nightmare. But we got everything all cleaned up, got the floor all cleaned. I got this whole other side of this garage here. It's in dark now, but I'm gonna finish my woodwork over there. But I just I needed to get her in. Got to get her out of cold. She's a New Mexico car. Now she's probably used to them cold nights. So first thing I'm trying to do is, uh, boy, I tell you, there's a lot of work here. I mean, not physically on the car, just figuring out what's what and. Uh, a lot of work of like researching and trying to just uh figure this puzzle out you know what i mean like just you know what's original what's not and uh looks like i can uh getting parts ain't going to be really a problem but the first thing i had to figure out was the uh serial number and i was told right there is the serial number which appears to me to be p24 star 552045 so we'll look that up. And then this is when the engine was actually built. I believe it's 61653. No idea what those two dots and that letter A mean. And I thought there was something back here, but I can't. This might be the paint. So just trying to figure out, you know, is this the right block? What's that number there? Um, I also have to... Uh, on the door you know they don't back then they, i guess they don't put the vin number on the dash anywhere but i've got this right here it says vehicle number i'm assuming that's the vin number right so i'll have to find out but man i just the smell of this and uh that's steering wheel Whew. so that's what i've just been working on tonight um uh, Tried to fart with the carburetor a little bit. I've come to figure out that um, there's no choke control on this. Um, if it is, it isn't working, but right here, this works the choke. There's nothing connected to it. So the reason why it took 10 seconds to start, which ain't bad, uh, stone cold when I went and looked at the car was because the choke was wide open. Uh, there's a butterfly in here or basically like a round plate that opens up as you see like it's a round plate that opens up and when it's standing straight up and down that's when a vehicle's warm to allow maximum air when it is uh, cold you want that thing to shut and just let it run on fuel and then it'll open up as it warms up what's well, just open and uh, so it just stays open and uh, therefore it makes it harder to start in the mornings. So I just uh, had my wife crank it over and I just held it closed. I took the air cleaner off, that big stupid thing. But, uh, and she fired right up. So now what I'm not sure is they're saying that down in here in the carburetor, when you take this air cleaner off, you can look down in there. I guess when you pump the pedal without it running, it should spray fuel in there because in here, there's a float. And what this float does is when the fuel comes in, like I said, I don't, I'm, I've don't. i never been really good with carburetors, but I have a basic idea how they work. This float fills up. There's like It's almost like that ball in your toilet and your tank. You know, as the water level rises, that tank controls the float to shut it off. Otherwise, it, you know, they would just fill up and, you know, I'm not sure... You know what's all going on in there and uh there's an accelerator pump in there um it could just be gummed up you know on these old engines the new gas is just uh kind of harsh on them so 
I've got to get those hood protectors when you're working on them. I mean, like I said, she's not no shelf queen, but she is my queen. And, uh, yeah, so I think the first thing I'm going to, what I would like to do is it's probably the wrong time of the year, but I really want to get this thing up on the, uh, my goal is to get this up on the, uh, all four on the jack stands as high as I can, and I want to clean the hole underneath, get all the gunk, and I mean, there's some serious, that is uh, some petrified grease there if I've ever seen it. I want to get that all cleaned off. That's probably going to be at least a week's worth of work. I mean, it's like it on the transmission, the bell housing. Yeah, you can't tell it's a little too dark in there. But uh, I want to get it all cleaned off. Like I said, don't drip nothing on the ground, except I figure out the fuel, why it's leaking. Right here where the fuel line goes to it, it's actually cracked. I don't know if somebody put the fuel line on, you know, they, I don't know what, to, hard to say. I mean, uh, it may not be an American made piece of product. Therefore, uh, the idea that it could be junk is uh, very well possible. So that needs change. But uh, like I said, it only leaks whenever it's uh, running and it's just a very little bit. But uh, something that I need to, yeah, here's what I'm thinking. Yeah, because see, we're cold now. See, I'm finding out that. There is a flapper here. You see this? Okay. I'm going to have to pull the carburetor off. So here's your exhaust manifold, right? Okay, this is where all the exhaust gases come out. You got one cylinder. There's two two here that share one. So that's three and that same thing back there. Well, they all come through here, right? And then they eventually want to come out and go down to the bottom, which the exhaust is leaking there. There's a ga uh, gasket that's blown out. But beans, the intake sits on the exhaust. What this is supposed to do is, in the mornings when it's cold, there's a spring behind here that when you're heating it up, it contracts. And there's a flapper that opens and closes. Um, there's a flapper. So typically, if this wasn't here, your exhaust would just go right down to your outpipe. But this thing actually closes when it's cold. And it's automatic, that spring, when the spring's cold, it uh, does not contract. It's kind of at its biggest, I guess. It's like a coil spring. And uh, it actually leaves the valve open, so all the hot air, well, some of it, not all of it, but the warm air passes through and it comes up through the carburetor to warm up the carburetor and the fuel for easier starting. And then once it's warming up, as it's warming up, this thing should be moving on its own and actually close not actually close it's like a diverter it allows it to go up to the carb or just go right out the tailpipe and then it should be like out when the vehicle's warm this one's staying in that position i got to make sure yes like i said it's just always been there so i'm assuming it's it's not working but when i press the throttle i'm assuming what's happening is when i press the throttle it will uh it will open up on the exhaust gas got enough pressure to push the thing open and it opens but this thing should just stay open and uh, so I'll have to investigate that. I'm probably going to have to take the carb off. And it's got to be that spring. So I thought I watched a video on it. And somebody was explaining that uh, I'll have to check it out again. But, yeah, there's no way to control the choke, which is no big deal. And uh, there's an access hole here. I have no idea what that thing is sticking on. Kind of like pulled it. I don't know. I'm always afraid of touching shit. And, uh, I pulled it and... Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> have to, there's so much to investigate here, but I'll just run like a cable and uh, the cable will hook on the other side of the carburetor on that linkage that I was playing with earlier. And then all you do is you just uh, pull it to close the choke, push it in to open it all the way when the vehicle's warmed up. So that's not a big deal. Um, one concern I do have is there's a little hole here uh, that poked through. I just have to see about getting that welded or... And just get some JB weld and run a tapping screw or something in there. I'm not really sure. So I'm getting a little pop, you know, a little exhaust there. I'm noticing on the intake manifolds, I'm, it's like there's, there's some wetness when it's running, obviously. So that's probably not sealed up 100%. Um, and I noticed it on the other side, too, that it was uh, wet when it was running. So I think what I really want to do is I want to get this engine all cleaned up, the engine, transmission, everything degreased and... Uh, and I think what I'm going to do, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull them spark plugs and I'm going to do a compression test and I'll show how that works. And uh, you're just screwing this gauge into where the spark plugs go, right? 
And what you're doing is you're checking for any leak through each cylinder. And you just turn the engine over. Of course, you just disconnect the coil so it don't fire up. And uh, it'll read a pressure. It's kind of like an air pressure, like on your tire of a car or anything else. It's just uh, as that piston's going up and down, it's compressing air. And uh, I think on this one, it's brand new. It should be upwards around 120. But beans, this ain't new, and I don't know how, when or how or well or if it's even been overhauled at all. And uh, so I don't. I think you know somewhere around 90 pounds is acceptable. I think anything less than that. I think no one cylinder should be more than 10% off. So we'll do all them, and that kind of just gives you an idea where you're at. Like I said, this thing fires up when it's cold, and it's. I mean, that's kind of a good sign. You got good compression, and in fact, it don't smoke at all. Um, it seems like it's running rich, but like I said, I know I got some carburetor issues here that I need figured out. There is a carburetor kit that came with this, and uh, so we got a hell of a learning step here, but I'm learning that I can go on to rockauto.com and buy all the hoses, the belts, and the shit's all like really cheap, you know, but it may be coming from overseas, but some of the stuff, I guess I'm not really, you know, the vehicle ain't going to be on the road every day hammering back and forth to work, you know, or it's, I'm not going to be... Uh, Hey, I may dress up as a salesman, start selling shit door to door like the old days. But uh, so stuff that uh, is okay to kind of skimp on, but the things that uh, you don't want to, I won't. So, but got a lot of figuring out to do. This is the 12 volt conversion. It was a six volt system. And uh, I got to figure this shit all out <laughs> because I actually want to get this all put into some sort of uh, that black plastic that you normally see wires put in. So. But we got some things to do. There's no the batteries not tied down. And, uh, you know, it just goes to show that uh, I was dri I've been driving this car around. There's been some bolts. There were some nuts laying on top of the head. They look like they've been there for a long time. So she's a uh, old Ro Rosalita. She's, uh, she's a smooth runner. It's got air shocks in the back, but I believe the one's blown out. But uh, they're not that expensive to get. And uh, front ones aren't ex very expensive either, so... But that's basically what we're doing here this evening, just kind of doing some investigating. Yeah, I got to get the uh, get the rotors pulled off of that on the backs. I got the wheels off, of, as you've probably seen that, but I had to get them pulled off. I got to go get them rotors. But uh, I put some fuel treatment in the tank of her and uh, some of this lead uh, additive. Uh, these vehicles used to, they were made to run on leaded gas. So I put a lead additive in there, kind of helps with the uh, valve train, so... But she's a smooth runner, and once she, I mean, like I said, now she fires up, you know, cold, and uh, so I, I, I think I got a good, 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 you know, at least a good platform here to work off of, and if I don't have to get into rebuilding this and just refreshing up the gaskets, and, uh, you know, oh, we'll just kind of stick with that, so, but, all right, everybody, thanks for uh, watching along, like I said, uh, you get anything out of it if you don't like i said uh yeah so all right everybody have a good evening adios